So um, I wanted to talk today about the actual use of open licensing because I find in these sorts of communities that people talk um, and a lot of with a lot of theory and, and everybody kind of agrees that open licensing is great, but um, there are also a lot of challenges and, and I also find people really don't understand it that well. So I thought I would present the way that my organization has been using open licensing in a way um, to kind of show how it can be done and it's sort of like a workshop. So um, like I said, I work for the Association for Progressive Communications. APC, it's a lot easier to remember. Um, we were founded in like 1989, so kind of before like before there was really even the internet. I mean, to, it, it was a network in the beginning of some ISPs, um, even a couple of them, one in, one in Mexico City and the other one in Los Angeles, or, or San Francisco rather, they actually connected to each other before there was internet connecting Mexico and California. So we were around in the very early years um, and we, didn't we didn't have our in, we, are, we didn't have our own website until like 1996, um, and and this was before. I mean, even though the the GPL the GNU Public License was around in 1989, we didn't really even know. Even though we were like very committed to sort of the open web and and people connecting to each other, we were like huge. You know, like many uh, organizations at the time had like great uh, aspirations for what the internet could be for um, connecting people and, and civil society and, and improving social justice movements. But we didn't have any notion of um, what that meant for the content we were producing and what the internet would do to actually change uh, society's culture around, around um, sharing information. So it wasn't until like yeah, it, it wasn't until 2003 um, that we be that we that our website featured a copy left link instead of a C. So when our website was first published in 1997, 96, did I say 96? Um, it, it had a copyright at the bottom, <laughs> which is very much strange. Um, Creative Commons as well has only been around since 2001, so I think that's also something. It, 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 it took a while to catch up, and Creative Commons was very much influenced by the GPL, so that's an important connection. Because um, I'm going to use a bunch of these as I talk, I'll just kind of give you um, the rundown now. Um, so a Creative Commons license can have a few different terms. Um, the Creative Commons flat is like a public domain license, um, maybe closely associated with the copyleft. Then there's an enhancement which is by, so that's an attribution, meaning that if you cite the work, you have to attribute it to the person or the people or the group who um, have, have the license. Um, essay is share like, meaning um, if you use the content uh, the, under a share like um, uh, license, you have to also share it alike. And it, you have to also release it under Creative Commons. Um, then the no derivatives means you can't modify it. You have to take the whole thing. So if you have a book that's under CC by ND, for example, um, people aren't allowed to take excerpts and quote them um, unless they give the original attribution. We'll get, well, I'll get to that later. But in, in no derivatives also means you can't translate it, um, can't remix it anyway. Um, this is particularly thing, like people like this for images often. And then the non-commercial means that um, while people can take it and use it and so on, they can't make any money off of it. So um, it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a company or an individual. Um, that's what non-commercial means. So anyway, so I wanted to start off with a few myths. And, and I ask you all, because I also know coming into these communities that most of the time we're talking to each other and so you all probably have some degree of knowledge about this already. So I wondered if you could participate with me, especially because it's the last session of the day so you can kind of <laughs> wake up a little bit. <laughs> um, can anybody answer um, who controls uh, the work and, and how, can, how can it be used if it's under a CC license? Um, any, anybody? Yeah, in the back? Yes, correct. Not, not Creative Commons. Sometimes that's a confusion. 
So it's, yeah, so it's the person who holds the license, um, or the author, exactly. It, it, it depends. If the author, for example, has um, commissioned the work under an organization or something, the organization may have signed in a contract with them that the organization is the owner of their work, for example. So it's not always the author, although that's often what author, what we mean by author is the license holder. Okay, enforcement. Um, how are open licenses meaningful in courts of law, if at all? Any, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you say more? Uh, the contract law, it's a contract between the copyright holder and whoever uses it. Mm -hmm. So it's just a contract. Uh, right. And any, but if someone uses it, contrary to the license, then it does a copyright violation. <laughs> Yeah, you said if somebody uses it contrary to the contract, then it becomes a copyright violation. Exactly. So yes, so that is also something that copy left or open licenses are not just some sort of like um, alternative wishy-washy idea. They actually are, are legal and you can pursue violations in court uh, in, in almost every country in the world. Um, there are successful cases all over the place. So it is a binding thing. Um, mixing license. So how do you remix or release remixed content with different licenses? Anybody have a, an answer to that? Can you? Is it possible? No. This guy knows a lot. <laughs> well, yes, everybody should know lawyers. <laughs> lawyers are very helpful. Okay, it, it depends on the license. Uh, mm -hmm. So some licenses can be mixed with others, some cannot. It's true, but mostly you can remix. I think there's a myth that maybe remixing isn't allowed, but there's, there's a great deal of overlap, and as long, typ typically the rule is, just to, for shorthand, as long as you cite the original license within your work, it's, it's more or less fine. Um, but there, Creative Commons has, if you, if you have a sticky case, huh, you can go to Creative Commons, they have really nice grids that show you where things remix. But you can, so you could have, for example, a uh, Creative Commons license that is restrictive, more restrictive than, for example, the, co the content that you are remixing, if that makes sense. Commerce. Um, and so there's a lot, this may be not in this room, but there are a lot of people who believe that copyleft or open licensing is anti-commerce. Um, so in what ways is copyright better for commerce than open licenses? Does anybody have any ideas? Better for the public? Yes, it's better for the public. Yeah, for the consumer, for sure. In what ways is it better for, for authors or owners of the content? Any ideas about that? Maybe examples? I mean, I think one, I'll just answer it. I think maybe one way that we've seen the, the open licensing or the free culture movement sort of change is with the internet is um, this is almost an expectation now. And, and the internet is like a place of iteration. It's like, you know, you, you, you see memes, you see um, articles. You know, how many times have you like logged into your Twitter feed and you see the same article basically published on like 10 different news sites. They're just like sort of iterating on each other and then there's, you know, the think piece and then the hot take on the think piece that, you know, anyway, this is, not, this is not necessarily about licensing, but just to say that the internet is a place of iteration. And so throwing your culture, throwing your uh, writing out into that world is actually, I think, quite good for, ex uh, for, for exposure. It's good for generating buzz. It's, it's one of these things that's becoming uh, a form of capital in and of itself, which is just attention. So I think that um, letting go a little bit of your intellectual property in this day and age on the internet is actually quite a good thing, um, and it's rewarded. So actually, the, what, we, what my organization has found is that um, we, we sort of take this uh, very seriously, this sort of idea that the internet is for iteration and for change and for improving. Um, and we don't want just people to, we don't want to just release our content um, under the open licensing. We actually want to encourage people to actually act, actively use it. Like one of, you know, I'm the communications expert at my organization and one of the things we want is for, for people to take what we've done and to reuse it and remix it and re-release it. So it's not so simple to just put your content on your website anymore with a Creative Commons license. Um, 
we actually have to organize and to, to put work into getting other people to pick up what we've done and, and to reuse it. So I'm going to give you one example of how we um, are doing that with, with a publication we're just putting out. So this is, um, this is called the Digital Security First Aid Kit for Human Rights Defenders. Um, we released it, the first edition, in 2012, and we're releasing another edition this year in English, Spanish, French, Urdu, and Hindi. Um, it's, it starts out as a sort of infographic where you can click on different problems you might be having, such as I need to carry around sensitive data in a secure manner, or I need to send emails that only the recipient can read, um, you know, things like this. It's, it's basically things that human rights defenders might um, need if they ever find they're in trouble with their digital security. So we want this to spread far and wide. Um, we want people to, uh, we, want, we want it to be translated into languages beyond the ones that we've already identified. Um, and so how, how do we actually get people to do that? So we've, just, we've, we've kind of put together a cookbook of how um, this, this works well. Um, so first, we give it a, an open license. We use CC BY SA. We, we, we use the BY because we do want attribution and we do want to be able to track uh, the impact that this document has had in other places. We use SA, we use share alike because we're sort of proselytizing uh, Creative Commons. We want other people to be encouraged to use CC licenses as well. Um, we make the we make the site quite usable, so people need to be able to use it on mobile. People need to be able to use it on their computers. We release it in PDF. We have it as an interactive um, web application that uses free software, et cetera, et cetera, because we want people to first be able to actually access it, um, and then maybe they'll be encouraged to reuse it. Um, the second thing we've done, like I said, is we've, we've got it localized, so not only translating it into all those languages, but actually localizing it, meaning um, the context in Pakistan is vastly different than it would be in Quebec, and so we want to make sure that um, the content is relevant for a large audience. Um, and that it reaches then those places. Um, we use for the text and for the actual um, content of the kit, we use Markdown um, instead of HTML or um, I don't know what else people use these days. <laughs> we found Markdown to be the most extensible um, sort of text format um, because you can take Markdown and you can turn it into HTML, you can turn it into textile or, or wiki, like what is it, wiki, the wiki format. It's similar to it. Um, and then the last thing we do is we, we put this in version control so we can track changes to the kit. So certainly when you're talking about digital security, for example, um, the applications change over time, um, you know, five years from now, hopefully people won't be using Facebook and they'll be using something else and we'll have to change the kit. Uh, so we, we version control it so we can track the, we can easily change the kit as it goes on and we can track those changes and then change them in the translations and so on. Um, and also so that people um, who are who are interested in taking the text can take that in a very easy to use format. Um, they can dump it right on the computers, they can do all kinds of things to it and then maybe use you know, GitHub or something like that to upload it again or, or whatever it is. Uh, we version control both the text and the web app so people could essentially create an entire copy of the website from beginning to end. So that, anyway, was just, uh, that's the end of my talk. Um, it was just an example of, of ways that we're using open licensing and we encourage uh, other people to do the same. Um, and I would take, yeah, any questions now or you can find me online. I've got all the references. You could take a picture of that with your phone and be able to find everything I talked about today. <laughs> <laughs>